In this video, we're going to be writing a pair of simple GTK apps in JavaScript. So if you remember my Vala videos from last year, this is going to be pretty much the same app except it would be written in JavaScript instead of Vala. So it's worth mentioning that Elementary OS 5 Juno was just released, and that's what we're going to be using as our development platform. And since it's based on Ubuntu, all you need to get started with GJS, which is the official GNOME bindings for JavaScript, is GJS the interpreter, or compiler, or I guess application, whatever it is. Now GJS is built on Mozilla's SpiderMonkey 52, and it's a first-class citizen as far as the GTK bindings go. It's as officially supported as Vala and Python are. However, if you're like me and you don't like SpiderMonkey or you just prefer the Node way of doing things, there are no GTK bindings in the form of the repo, Node GTK. Node GTK is an unofficial alpha project to bring GTK bindings to the Node runtime, which is a runtime based around Google's V8 JavaScript engine. Getting started with Node GTK requires quite a bit more. You'll need Node and NPM, of course, which you can get from the standard repos or Node source. You'll also need Build Essential, Git, G Object Introspection, and libgi repository 1.0.dev, or dash dev. All of the code we're gonna be working with in this video can be found in my GitHub account under gtk-languages. There's a folder in this repo for each language binding that I've done. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me just open up a file here, and we'll start out with gjs. So the first thing we'll do is import gtk. Next, we'll initialize gtk with null and null because there's no arguments to pass in. Now, all modern GTK applications have a header bar nowadays. This is especially true with elementary OS apps. So we initialize the GTK header bar, we give it a title, we give it a subtitle, and we make sure that it shows our close button. Next up, we'll want to create a window. We'll set the window position to center. We'll want to connect up the destroy event, that way when we close the window it actually ends the application. We'll set the default size to a modest 350 by 70. We'll attach the header by setting the title bar to the header. And we'll set the border width to 10 because that adds a little polish, it's nice. And just for fun, we'll throw a button at the window. We'll create a new GTK button on the window, add it, and initialize a label, hello GJS. And lastly, we'll want to show the window when the application starts. And gtk.main kicks off the main GTK loop. Now that we've finished writing our code, we'll save the file as a JavaScript file. Open a terminal in the directory with the file and do gjs, the name of the file. And just like that, we have a simple GTK application written in JavaScript. So that's gjs, let's take a look at Node GTK. So the first thing we'll want to do is initialize npm because we need to pull in the Node GTK package to get started. Once we've initialized npm, we can do npm install Node GTK. Now, as of this video, the current version of Node GTK 0.2.0 has a dependency with a vulnerability. I actually submitted a pull request to this project to fix it. So the fix is in the repo, but a new NPM package hasn't been created by the maintainer yet. So once Node GTK has been created, we create a new JavaScript file. Now, spoiler alert, I'm going to kind of rush through this file because it's almost the exact same as GJS. There are a few differences. At the top of the file, we'll require node GTK, which is node syntax. And that's followed up by another require because we want to pull in GTK.3. We'll start the loop and initialize GTK. From here, everything is the same except the casing. GJS and Vala use snake casing. Node GTK uses Pascal casing. And node GTK uses the node syntax for events and signals. So when we connect the destroy event, we do window.on destroy, and then we use an anonymous function to call GTK main quit. But other than that, everything is pretty much the same between the two applications. To launch the application, we do node, followed by the name of the JavaScript file, and there you have it, a GTK application running on top of node. Now, when you compare the two applications, there is an almost comical difference in resource usage. Now, I absolutely want to point out that this is not indicative of a problem with Node. This is an alpha project, and there's probably lots of optimizations to do. GJS has been around for a long time, and it is highly optimized. So really, the only reason why you would want to use Node GTK over GJS is if you prefer the Node ecosystem. Using Node GTK allows access to all of the NPM packages, including the package.json, which is a really awesome way of managing your module. 
The conventional GNOME way of handling packages involves a whole bunch of really awful scripts like make files or meson files and Python scripts and it's just a mess. For this reason, if I were to write a GTK application with JavaScript, I would absolutely 100% use no GTK over GJS. In my opinion, packaging GTK applications is like the worst aspect of GTK, and using something like no GTK consolidates all of that into a package.json, which is arguably one of the reasons why Node applications are so damn popular in the first place. Everything is managed in this one file. And the last thing I want to show you is how similar these JavaScript applications are to the Vala application I wrote. So I think that pretty much wraps this video up. Again, I want to point out that Elementary OS 5 Juno is out, and if you're interested in making a GTK application or an Elementary OS application, you could use JavaScript just like you could use Vala. Writing a GTK application is relatively simple, and honestly, it's kind of fun. Packaging the application is kind of a pain in the ass. But luckily, elementary OS applications have their own sort of application lifecycle with Houston CI and all this other stuff. The elementary OS team wrote some really great blogs on this whole process, and I suggest you go check them out if you're interested. I hope that you've enjoyed the video, and if you did, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, check the description out for information on how you can support the channel. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.